Hello and welcome back peeps, my name is Plenty of Zach and today we're going to be talking about EQing your voice specifically for streaming. Now when we talk about EQing voices for streaming, the main thing that we're trying to do is complement our voices and not change them. So the plugins that we're going to be using today are actually from Reaper plugins, which I know a lot of people have talked about and that's because they're super great and they're free. So why not use an amazing program? When you Google Reaper plugins, the first website you should see after you Google it should be the reaper.fm slash REA plugs. Then what you're going to want to do is download the 64-bit version, go ahead and install that. And to check that it was installed properly, go into your C drive, go to your program files, and then look all the way down to the Vs and you should see a VST plugin folder. When you click inside there, you should now see the REA plugs folder. And inside there, you should see a bunch of different DLLs and a few other things. If the install went correctly, this is where all of those plugins should be at. Once they're here, OBS knows to look for this folder to find these VST plugins. And speaking of OBS, let's go ahead and open up OBS. So now that we're inside of OBS here, you can kind of see in the backdrop that I have a little cheat sheet here. And that's specifically because this is what I use from Producer Hive to help me understand where different frequencies are at on the frequency chart and how they affect my voice and other voices that I've worked with around my time here. So some of the main areas that are of interest for us, if you've never seen this chart here, are your fundamental frequencies. And that's where like the majority of your voice sits in this spot here. It's the main like like oomph to your voice. And that's usually around this 100 to 300 that we see right here. And when we talk about boosting or cutting stuff, again, we want to go for subtlety with this. Usually somewhere between a three and a five decibel cut or boost is kind of where the max should be at. The next area of interest for us is what's called the box. And it's as soon as you hear it, you're going to be like, wow, it really does sound like you're talking in a box. Like it's such a it's such a great concept because it really sounds like it. And some people need to have a boost here. So don't look at this as like, ah, you have have to do exactly what this shows. Some people might need a little bit of a boost in there. And a lot of this will also be kind of dependent on what room you're in and stuff like that. And I'll show you a little bit about how you can figure out if you need to cut or boost in these sections here. From there, we go up into what's called like the nasal slash like the honky section. And in that area, some people might need a boost because of the fact that they don't have a lot of like nasal or honk and they can boost that section up and get more kind of like presence and clarity from their voice. Then you have what's called the sibilance zone. And sibilance is when you're doing the S -s or th th. so when you're saying like thick or Sally stuff like that that's a sibilance and that's where some of that is at you can cut it in EQ or you can use something called the DS or which I'll cover in another video in a short little while here and then you have at the very end you have what's called like the air and this is the area where a lot of like the high-end like sparkle exists and I find that a nice little boost up in this region does help quite a bit but again you might have like a lot of AC noise or something from like you know air ducts and whatever else and when you boost that section up all you can hear now is that so let's kind of talk about how you can adjust some of these things to get you the best voice for you. So let's go ahead and start affecting this by going down to our microphone, go to the filters. Instead of the filters, go ahead and hit the plus at the bottom, go down to where it shows the VST2 plugins. Let's go ahead and name this EQ1. Hit OK. Then where it says, please select the plugin, go ahead and hit that drop down and look for the REA EQ dash standalone. So once you're here, go ahead and now hit the open plugin interface. All right, so now we're inside of this and you can see that there's a squiggly yellow line that's moving around and a bunch of stuff in here. Let's 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 break it down real quick here for you. This blue line with the one, two, three, four on top, this is essentially what you are boosting and cutting. So if I grab number two here and I start moving it around, what I'm doing is saying like, hey, if I bring it above zero into this positive section, you can see that I have a boost of about 7.8 dB centered at 327 hertz. That's saying like, hey, take these frequencies and make them this much louder. Or if I pull it below the zero and I have a negative, you know, seven 0.4 dB cut, I'm saying, hey, take all these frequencies that are around this area and bring them away or attenuate them, make them softer or quieter. So that's what we can do with this. You can either click and drag and move these around, or we can do it all from this section that's down below. So I'm going to reset the defaults here and let's go to the next thing, which we see this yellow squiggly line. And this is my voice. These are all the frequencies that are inside of my voice. So now for me, you can see that most of my voice is down here in this lower region, you know, centering, centering around somewhere between 300 and 100 is where most of my voice is at. That's the loudest section of my voice. So if I hold a lower note like Ooh, you can see there that it's all the lower stuff where if I if I hold like a higher note or if I use what's called the sibilance, 
you can see all of that S sound is somewhere up here in this like 10,000 kilohertz range. So this is the main thing that we're talking about here when we're talking about fundamental frequencies and then like the high end range and all of this type of stuff. This is the graph that we're looking at. If I want to do anything to that, we come down to this lower section here where we see enable type frequency gain and bandwidth. Enable just simply turns on or off whatever boost or cut you're using here. Type is what type of boost or cut you're using. A low shelf means that if I apply some type of a gain, everything below that frequency is what's kind of being affected up to the frequency and a little beyond. A high shelf just says, hey, everything after that section, go ahead and boost it up. A band is just that. It's how it's just a kind of a, hey, I want to pull these these ranges here centered around my target. I want to pull them up or pull them down. And then this is where you can affect the width of that. If you go down to bandwidth here, you can actually make that smaller. So if you want to affect a really narrow range, you can have a much lower bandwidth here. Or if you want to affect like everything, you can make it really wide. The gain is literally just that. Do you want to have a boost to those sections or do you want to have a cut to those sections? If you want to center around a certain frequency, you can grab your frequency slider and move that up and down. The other notable type Types here would be low pass, which this only allows low frequencies to pass through this. So if you want to, you know, if you're a bass player and you only want those low bass notes to come through, you might have a high pass that starts at 5,000 kilohertz or something. Or if you only want the high frequencies to go through, see that little bump that's happening right down over here around this like 50 and below range? That for me is just kind of the rumble of my, the area that I'm in and the rumble around this room here. So I might want to just simply cut all of that away. And that's where a high pass would come in. I can get rid of all those like low frequency things that my voice doesn't have anything intelligible inside there. And I can guarantee you that most people's voices don't. So for our experience here, let's go ahead and look at a band. I'm going to make it a little bit narrower so I'm not affecting a whole bunch of stuff. And let's go ahead and take a look at affecting my voice. So like we talked about, right, I know my voice sits somewhere between 100 and 200. So I'm going to make this 150 here and I'm going to use a boost of about three. So now let's say like, oh, well, let's say I want to do a huge boost to this, right? I want to use like a 10 dB boost. And this is with the boost on. This is with the boost off. So you can hear that when I have that boost on, it's very boomy and you kind of start losing like what I'm saying and stuff like that. So this is why I talk about a lot of the time when we're doing boosts and cuts, we want to settle in right around somewhere between three and five decibels. So this is what's enhancing our main oomph of the voice, that core frequency stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next range. So now we moved everything over and now we're talking about specifically this box range. And, and I just want to show a little demonstration with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the second band or I can click on the second tab. I'm going to make sure it's on band and I'm going to center this at 450 hertz, which is right in the middle of the box range. I'm going to make it a fairly lower bandwidth. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a big old gain on this. So now with this gain on it, do you hear how it sounds like I'm in like a, a weird box type thing? Here's what it sounds like if I take it away. So now I'm going to take all that away and it should sound a little bit clear. So this is with the cut on and this is with the cut off. Off. Hopefully you can see that type of a difference there. A lot of the time in these type of regions, which are called like, they could be problematic regions or they could just be like the reverberance in your room and whatnot. This is what you can do to get rid of those noises. And here's a way that you can actually find some of these noises too of like, oh, hey, do I need to cut more frequencies away? You could take a very low bandwidth here, give yourself a big old gain of like 12. And then what you want to do is while you're talking, go ahead and pan this all the way up and listen for the sounds, listen for weird resonance tendencies and then start to slowly bring your weight back down. Okay, do I hear anything? Hello, hello, hello. I'm gonna check this through, I'm gonna check. So I can hear, I have a lot of issues at about this 450 range. Yeah, I just hear a lot of like whoa, 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 weird, like kind of phasing noises. And I don't recommend going through and you know, surgically finding all of these things and pulling them out, but it gives you an idea of like, do I need to do some more tweaking to this? So for us, I am gonna make a cut right around this area and I'm gonna do like a minus four and a half cut to this area and I'm gonna make it just a little bit wider. So let's take a quick listen to with both of these on so far. So this is with both of those EQs on. And if I go ahead and turn off that particular filter, this is what it should sound like with everything off. So right now, all that we're doing is just, we're just very slightly tweaking our voice just a little bit to give us the best that we can out of this. So now in this next range here, this is the mid range bite, or we start getting into, like I talked about earlier, the nasal and honkiness. So if you have a really nasally voice, you might actually need to take a little bit of a cut here 
Or if you feel like, hey, I feel like I could use a little bit more presence in my voice, this is also where you can kind of boost a little bit of that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go to the third tab. Once again, we're on a band and I'm gonna actually center this around, for now, let's start at like 1500 or so. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself about a three dB boost. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller I'm going to put this down to like a one on the bandwidth here. So this is with that particular you know, mid-range boost on, and here's with that mid-range boost off. Let's take a look at what a cut might sound like. And here's that same section with a cut now. Now for my voice, I can tell that I need to have a little bit of a cut here from, from what I can hear in my headphones. And the reason I say that is when I look at the graph, one, I don't have a whole lot of frequencies in this range that are usually within my main vocal section, but also if I boost this all the way up to like, you know, like a plus 10 or plus 12, I start sounding like I'm on the radio video and that's an area that I don't really want to be boosting up to me because the fact that it starts sounding very like old timey radios. So for me, I've always found that, you know, about a minus four-ish or so cut works really well here. But again, your voice might be different with this and you might have a whole lot of information in that section that you do want to boost up. So now let's go ahead and take a look at these last two sections. And for us, that'll be the sibilance area and then kind of the final end of just where all the air and sparkle kind of exists in an EQ. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the fourth one and now right Right now it's set as a high shelf. So if I put a gain here, it'll just boost everything that's past this. And that's not really what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and change that to a band. Let's make it a little bit narrower. And let's go ahead and start adding in some type of a cut. Now we need to find where our sibilance zone is at. So what I can do is if I just hold an S sound, so like you can see that a lot of my, my S centers on the frequency around probably about 9,000 kilohertz, maybe eight and a half thousand kilohertz, somewhere in there. So what I can do with that is grab the frequency slider and I can slide that all the way up. So I adjusted it just a little bit down to 8,900 hertz because I found that that was about where the centered actually kind of came in at. Now, you're not going to hear this one really come in very often because I, well, one, I know kind of how to control a little bit of my, my sizzle, but also two, most of the words that I say don't have a whole lot of harsh sibilance to it. So if you feel like you need more of a cut here, feel free to do so. Otherwise, there are also other tools that are out there that we'll cover later on here in a little while that's called a de that can really help take off that S sound. And then we can take a look at the final region, which is the air region. Now, I'm also out of bands, but we can add one. So you can hit add band, and now you have a fifth band that you can use for whatever you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this on over to around, let's start at right about 10,000 hertz. I'm going to change the type, most importantly, to a high shelf. And from here, I'll go ahead and boost some of this up. I'll give it like a nice little three boost. And then here we have pretty much an EQ that works fairly well for my voice. But again, yours might look a little bit different. So here we actually have the main EQ that I use for my voice all the time that I use for all of my recording, streaming and everything else on the bottom here. You can see that I have a boost right around the same section. I have a cut at the same section. This three here is just set there to keep it from pulling down all this mid range stuff that's right there. But I have another cut that's around that, you know, 2000 or so that really pulls out my honk. And then from there, I literally boost all the rest of it. So I have a lot more air in those like that sparkle that's happening. So that's why I said you can have all sorts of different type of EQs. There's not just gonna be one that yes, this will work every single time for you without fail, this is what you should do every time. Mine looks a little bit different than even the main one that's on here. You can see here that I do have a boost here and I have a cut here, but I have another cut here and then I boost all the rest of the section here because I found that works really well with my voice and my room that's right here. So those are some of the basics of how you can do the EQ for your voice for streaming and specifically looking at it in the context of the Reaper plugins. But there's one more type of EQ that we can use that's very easy to do that can really help out a lot. What you'll do is you go back to your microphone, go ahead and add in one more EQ. So go ahead and add one more VST2X and we're going to name this one EQ2. Go ahead and find that ARIA EQ again, open up the new plugin interface. And then inside here, we're going to do what's called a roll off. So I'm going to disable the first and the second one here. I'm going to change the first band to a high pass and I'm going to change the fourth band to a low pass. Then I'm going to grab the bandwidth on each of these and make sure that it's a fairly flat all the way to the edge there. Just kind of making sure that it's a nice flat curve that's here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take all of these low end frequencies that are below probably about 70 hertz and I'm just going to take them away. I just want to get rid of them because again, you can see here that I have that rumbling in my room that's over here that I don't want. That's nothing that I want in here because it's the rumbling from my lights, the floor, the you know washer and dryer that are out there. If a motorcycle passes by in the distance and you just hear that like blah, 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 that's all down in this range here. There's most most of us don't have low enough frequencies in our voice that 
they're gonna start touching the 70 hertz range. I find that 70 works really well to take away from like all of that low end clutter that doesn't really help us here. And then on the high end, I wanna boost this all the way, I wanna take this all the way up to about, all the way up to about 17,000 hertz because anything past about 17,000 hertz isn't gonna be very helpful. And I'm still gonna adjust this Q just a little bit, or this bandwidth, sorry, I call it Q because I'm used to it in a different software. I'm gonna grab this bandwidth and make it so that's a little bit flatter. So that way right around this 15,000 or so hertz, we're gonna start dropping away and then we really drop hard when we get too closer to that 20,000 hertz. So this here is again, getting rid of all the low end information that's just rumbling in the distance and getting rid of all that really high end, harsh sizzle sounding that's from like your air conditioning turning on or having a fan in the room. And it just has that really high pitched like squeal noise. Maybe you have a GPU that has a coil whine to it. That could all be up in that really high end range that's just like a really high pitched ringing. And that's not really useful for a voice. So let's just get rid of it. So those are kind of the main basics for EQing your voice with it. And feel free to experiment with this. Like I said, what I've shown here is just kind of a, a good kind of starting point to it. And I found that with some of the people that I've worked with, using something very similar to this has helped them just improve their mic quality for free. But there's no right or wrong answer with this. It's really just kind of have fun with it and see what sounds the best for you and the audience that you're with. So if you have any questions, please let me know down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And I like to learn and talk about this type of content. So if you have some constructive feedback for me, please let me know as well. Next time we'll talk about like compressors, gain limiters, and we'll start slowly building everything that you can to really get the most out of your microphone. So till then, I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody. Love ya. Bye.